sovereign ratings to junk. Alpesh Patel is principal at Profinium Group, a fund manages a lot of investment in India. Alpesh, uh, just going through the breakdown of that GDP, what, what seems particularly disappointing is the services component and um, consumer demand. I mean, one of the reasons I've, you know, one would always think about investing in India is, is the developing consumer there. So how concerned are you that those numbers aren't looking what they should be? Very concerned, not least because, as you say, consumption has fallen off a cliff to some extent. Now, we'd expect that to return back to some normality. There is some good news out of consumption. For the first time since the 1991 reforms, you've seen rural India consume more than urban India. Now, 65% of India lives in the rural villages. So that's an important, uh, that's an important development because it means wealth is being spread, or at least income is being spread if not not wealth so there are some slight positive signs and of course some of the sectors did hold up real estate held up construction has held up they've held up at double digit growth but what's fallen off a cliff is things like manufacturing investment has certainly done so because the government has spooked people and i think on balance there's more negative than positive bearing in mind as you say a lot of this is down to government spooking investors and uh, theoretically they could change things around with the right policies, but, but how long would it take them? They lack both the will and the ability, and I say that because when you look at the uh, amount of corruption and scandal surrounding corruption going on, they certainly lack ability to do something. Uh, they're being blocked, and they seem to be lacking the will, because if you're so busy with uh, what's widely regarded as your, your uh, snout in the trough to actually get on with uh, undertaking policy in the interest of the government, you're actually just treading water, taking as much money as you can, uh, whilst you've still got non-junk status, you're on the brink of junk status, and you've got an election in about 18 months, uh, and you just really are treading water because you're, uh, you're, you're a lame duck government. Where, where, does it, where does that leave investors then, right now, when, well, when you, when you paint that story, yeah? Yeah, well, it doesn't require me to paint it. The investors have spoken with, mm. their, uh, with their wallets. Investments have been fleeing the country, sadly. The rupee is at an all-time low against the dollar. Uh, it does mean that you can acquire, if you're shrewd, you can acquire one or two uh, relatively cheap assets because over the longer term, governments will change. Over the longer term, people will get fed up mm. with the level of corruption. Growth will resume uh, back from being around 5.5% to the 8% we'd seen before. So if you're, like us, a private equity investor, fine five to seven years you can wait but if you are in for two to three years uh, you're mighty angry at the government. Um, does the central bank now also sit on its hands? Has it well, done it, everything it, it can do? Because it's obviously still worried about inflation. And, it, it's uh, more principally worried about inflation, mm -hmm. which is what its principal activity is. It's not so much to target growth as it is to target inflation, which is running at 7%. So they're not likely to uh, look to either raise or lower interest rates, given the balance between diminishing growth and increased inflation. Uh, and I think they will exactly do that, just stand on their, uh, well, sit on their hands, yeah. as it were. Um, it's, it's kind of an interesting, you know, here we were, continuously talked about you know, India in the last few years and the, and the prospects of it, Charles, and, 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 it, and they've shot themselves in the they foot. They have, uh, well, betrayed an entire nation as the government. I mean, I'm speaking as a British Indian, yeah. and the Indian part of me is mightily furious that a country with so much resource, so much potential, has let down its own people, which is what, well, this is the reason why the people protest. I mean, there's talk mm. of uh, having some kind of Arab Spring equivalent. Well, you won't get that unfortunately but you do continuously get this level of corruption you get retrospective taxes like you saw on international companies like Vodafone who still hang around uh, because they nevertheless well, they are eking out because, some because, profits. Because for the re same reason you say we take a seven, you, you hang around because you see... An, you, the land the, of the, eternal the, Eastern promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah there, exactly. Eventually you hope that it changes and it, and it, it will. Out. It will. It's just that it's a duration of time and it won't do as well as it could have done. Which, mm. this, which is, you know, it's one of those, it's, it's like getting a C grade at, at school, you know, could have done better. And that's what's, what's but shameful here's about the, here's it. Here's the thing. Is there anything here, though, that is going to derail the fundamental development of a growing Indian middle class with you know, a growing middle class need for consumption of, you know, Western made goods? No, because thankfully or otherwise, 30% of the Indian economy is dependent upon the monsoon rains for its GDP growth. And because of that, it's more in the hands of the gods to that, that element. If it was more a controlled economy, uh, then really, I really think it would have been derailed by not just this government, could have been any 
government. Uh, but yes, thankfully, because it's still a, to a large part an agrarian economy, it still earns a lot of money out of food and growing crops and, uh, and the income it generates from that, it won't get derailed. But, you know, 5% is pretty anemic when you consider that this economy, uh, the Planning Commission in India was targeting 10% and it was achieving 8%. It, it, it ends up letting down, uh, well, lets, lets down the Indians themselves, which is why they take foreign aid from countries like Britain, because they can't afford uh, to do without it. Alpesh, always good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed for that. Yeah. Alpesh Patel, the principal at Profinium Group. Charles is sticking around for quite a bit more. As